Hi, boys and girls. It's Miss Kelly. And uh, tomorrow we will be uh, honoring September 11th um, and the events of September 11th, 2001, and remembering uh, the men and women who died on that day, and also honoring the heroes, the men and women that risked their lives and in some cases lost their lives uh, helping others, the police officers, the fire fighters, the EMTs, um, and the regular people that just tried to help others on that day. So I have a book to share with you today, and the title of this book is called The Man in the Red Bandana. And a bandana is this, um, it's like a piece of cloth that has decoration on it. You might see people wearing it around their faces or in their hair. Uh, the author of the book is Honor Crowther Fagan, and the illustrations are by John Crowther. When he was seven years old, Wells was given a bandana by his father. It was a special gift that made Wells feel strong. And there's the red bandana in Wells's pocket. And there's a blue bandana in Wells's father's pocket. Wells's dad always carried a blue bandana and Wells' new bandana was just like it, only red. From the moment Wells received that bandana, he carried it with him everywhere. It had lots of uses. It was a cowboy mask. A pirate hat. A flag to signal the end of the race. As Wells grew up, he stopped using his red bandana as a toy, and he started to use it underneath his helmets. You see, Wells was an athlete whose favorite sports were ice hockey and lacrosse. He wore that bandana underneath his helmet to keep the sweat out of his eyes. Wells not only wore a helmet when he played sports, he also wore one as a volunteer firefighter. And there is his lacrosse equipment, and he's putting on his red bandana before he puts his helmet on. And here he is playing ice hockey, and you can see the red bandana kind of poking out from underneath his hockey helmet. At the age of 16, Wells again followed his father's example and became a volunteer fireman. He trained with real firefighters and was taught that rescuing people who were trapped inside was their first priority. He also learned how to get safely through the burning building and put out the fires. It was this training and the red bandana that helped Wells become a hero. After college, Wells went to work on the 104th floor of the World Trade Center in New York City. Wells loved working up so high. He often called his father on rainy days to ask, is it raining where you are? When his father replied that it was, Wells would say, well, it's sunny up here. But on Tuesday morning, September 11th, 2001, it was not a rainy day. The sun was bright, and there were no clouds in the blue sky. So there is Wells at his desk in his office on the 104th floor. And this is a picture of the World Trade Center, the Twin Towers. Josh from maintenance, please come to the office. The Twin Towers, uh, and that is on September 11, 2001. As Wells sat in his office, he heard an explosion nearby that rattled his desk and his chair. When he looked out the window to see the World Trade Center Tower One building, he could see fire spewing out of the floors right across from him. Wells wanted to help with the tragic situation unfolding in the next tower. Just minutes after the explosion in Tower One, Wells left his office.
To get down to the lobby from above the 78th floor, you had to first take an elevator to the 78th floor sky lobby. From there, you took a nonstop elevator to the ground floor. Many people would be waiting in the sky lobby for their elevator. Wells knew that it would take too long to wait for an elevator from the 104th floor to the sky lobby and then one to the ground, so he headed down the stairs. In a few minutes, Wells had made it all the way down near the 78th floor. That's when another explosion occurred, only this one was much louder and stronger than the last. And these are the people that are waiting for the elevator. And this is Wells going down the stairs. Wells ran right for the door of the sky lobby but he could tell by the smoke coming into the stairwell that there were fires burning inside. Wells took out his red bandana and tied it around his nose and mouth so that he did not breathe in the smoke. When Wells entered the sky lobby, it was hard to see through all the smoke. There were badly injured people who needed to get his help to safety. He found a fire extinguisher to put out the flames that continued to endanger the survivors. Wells immediately took charge and called out to anyone who would, might be able to hear him, I found the stairs. If you can get up and walk, get up now. If you are able to help someone else, help them. Follow me, I know the way. Many people were dazed, but one woman was in such a state of shock that she could not walk. Wells wanted to help as many survivors as possible. He picked up the shocked woman and leading a group of three others, carried her down the stairs. Wells saw the air start to clear as they made it down the stairwell so he pulled his bandana from his face. When they made it to the 61st floor, the lights were on and Wells thought it was safe to send the people on their own. Wells told the group to continue on down the stairs and out of the building. He turned around and headed back up the stairs. Wells collected another group of survivors and ushered them to the stairs. Again, he led them down to the clean air on the 61st floor and told them to continue on to safety. Once again, Wells went back up the stairs. During his third trip to the sky lobby, Wells found that there were people who were alive but were trapped under heavy pieces of metal. He knew that in order to save them, he would need a firefighter's tool called the Jaws of Life. Wells followed the stairs down to the lobby for his third and final trip. He found the command center where firefighters and police officers were planning the rescue effort. Wells let them know that they would need the Jaws of Life up in the sky lobby. But Wells would not make it back up there. The damage to both buildings was too severe, and they soon collapsed. And that is the tool that is known as the jaws of life. It's used to pry things open. No one knew what had happened to Wells until his mother read a newspaper article months later. In the article, survivors recalled being saved by a man in a red bandana. She said to herself, there you are, Wells. I have finally found you. Wells was recognized through pictures by two women who he led to safety. They will never forget the bravery and strength that Wells showed on that day. They will never forget the man who saved their lives. The man in the red bandana.
And in the back of the book, there's a little information here. It says, Wells Remy Crowther's three trips from the 78th floor Sky Lobby to the 61st floor of the World Trade Center's South Tower saved many lives. Because of his bravery and courage on 9-11-2001, Wells was posthumously, that means after he has died, named as an honorary firefighter by the Fire Department of New York at the first time in the history of the department that an individual has been honored in this way. He has been recognized all over the world for his heroic acts through numer numerous media outlets, including ESPN's Outside the Lines. And on the back of the book, this is a photo, it's not a drawing, this is an actual photo of Wells Crowther. And the author of the book, Honor Crowther Fagan, um, it says, Honor Crowther Fagan received a Bachelor of Arts degree from Boston College with a dual degree in English and Communication. She is a stay-at-home mom to four children who enjoys reading, write, writing, and sports. This is Honor's first children's book inspired by the courageous acts of her brother. So her, she is Wells Crowther's sister. So they're brother and sister. John Crowther has juggled multiple careers as an artist, writer, director, and actor his entire life. He has published two cartoon collections and contributed to the illustrations for the children's book, How the Waif Bunny Saved the Boy. And that is the end. And I hope that you um, enjoyed this story and learned a little bit about Wells Crowther and his heroism on September 11th, 2001, and that you remember him on September 11th and his brave efforts to save other people and think about him every time you see a red bandana. Thank you, boys and girls.